All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to another Unplugged Alpha podcast. We're at number 94 in the series. Topic tonight is why women hate passport bros and how men screw it up. Um, I did a video on my Entrepreneurs and Cars channel last week that was published. And um, it wasn't about passport bros per se. It was about a guy that married a foreign woman. I believe she was Chinese. And his life was pretty much a living hell. Um, so he was looking for some guidance. And, you know, the TLDR version of it all was he he just didn't he wasn't selective when he was dealing with this woman and he didn't understand the dynamics of her interest in him and America and the the marriage or the love that they had created. Um, so in this video, I kind of want to talk more about the passport bro angle of it because it's because it's one of the series of comments that came up a lot in that video. Uh, it's got over 200,000 views, which is uh, pretty good for one week of play. So if you haven't seen it, it's the most recent video on the Entrepreneurs and Cars channel. You can check that out later. Um, but tonight I want to talk about that. There's a link in the uh, top chat pinned up there for the Q&A segment. Moff's in the green room. He'll make sure your audio and everything is all sorted for the Q&A segment. Uh, thanks for your patience and the delay of the show, but let's let's kick it off and get straight into this. Um, so the first thing I guess we need to address is why women hate the passport bro movement. And if you start doing some Googling, um, or some searches on YouTube, you'll see that there's a lot of articles on Google that, that come up from the more left leaning publications and they're, and they're basically shaming, uh, men that are leaving the West and going to other countries where women are more traditionally feminine, um, where masculinity is respected and valued. And uh, I guess one of the other angles, too, is your dollar goes a lot further in many of these countries as well, too, where cost of living goes down dramatically. Like, you could live very, very well uh, on a regular salary that you'd be getting in the States or Canada, uh, somewhere like uh, Colombia, parts of Asia. Um, there's lots of different angles in places that guys go. Um, but there's a strong draw for it. Now, I should say this, um, women hate it when men leave if it's the men that they want, okay? To sort of distinguish because the guys that leave and become the passport bros and they sort of go to go to another country to find uh, women, um, and I'll talk about whether bringing them back or staying there is a good idea or not, but to leave and go and do this, it, like women only care when it's the guys that they want to be with abandon options here to select options over there. Women hate that shit. Uh, they don't like it. It irritates the hell out of them. There's loads and loads of articles about it. You'll see podcast interviews talking about it. Um, if you're a top shelf guy that women want to be with and they're, and these guys are fed up with Western, strongly left-leaning, you know, liberalized type of women, um, they get pretty pissed off about it. And like, like how, how dare you do this? Like, how dare you exercise this option? Um, which is understandable because... Ladies don't like it when guys are able to take control of their lives. But let's just be honest. <clears throat> we'll call a spade a spade, but it's not popular when guys have autonomy, control, and sovereignty over their life, their money, their decisions, their life, life, their love life, and all these uh, things that sort of commingle and interchange within it. Somebody asked me in a call-in show once what I thought of the idea of artificial wombs. Uh, potentially coming in the future and, and giving men an opportunity to uh, pass on their name, their DNA, and to have kids without necessarily involving a woman in the equation. Because um, women today have that luxury, you know, by the way. Uh, you could be a, a lesbian couple, you could be an infertile couple, and you can get a sperm donor very, very easily. Um, there's there's groups, there's organizations that facilitate it, there's professional nonprofits that, that take care of all this stuff. It's very, very easy for women to get pregnant and have kids if they want. But for men, it's quite a bit more difficult. And the notion of this artificial womb came up. And I, you know, I thought about it. And I think that, again, anything that gives men autonomy, sovereignty, sorry, <laughs> sovereignty and control over their lives and their decisions and the direction they go uh, without the involvement of women, you know, per se, um, is definitely frowned upon, which is interesting because, you know, this notion of feminism is supposed to be about equality and equalism. Um, but when women have the right to do something 
by going to get sperm, it's okay. But I think when you're going to find guys doing things like using artificial wombs or even surrogates, there's loads and loads and stacks of paperwork. And there's ultimately going to be government involvement, especially for artificial wombs, if that's the thing that becomes a reality in the future. But back to the point of the passport bro thing, sort of sort of building on the idea of that of that um, video that I published. That's why women hate it. You know, it's as simple as that. Hot dudes that they want to be with leave and find more feminine, more agreeable women in another country. They get mad about it. So the second part to this is how do how do guys screw this up? And they and they really do screw it up a lot. Um, let me share something here, which is more or less like an expectation of what um, guys typically want or what they think they're going to get. Uh, so this is something that popped up on my uh, feed on Twitter today, and I thought it was relevant. So um, you know, just kind of place held it, but essentially. I don't know who this PD guy is, but he said, no twerking, no nudity, no makeup, three girls singing a folk song from what I don't know where, throw in a donkey and you're winning. I find these women attractive. Am I the only one? Now, it turns out, I'm just going to play this. Um, I'm not going to run the audio because it turns out these three girls are very popular. They have a massive YouTube channel with over a million subs. So there's going to be copyright issues or you know, music. Uh, I can't remember what they call it, now, but there's m musical infringements, let's just call it. Um, but they sound sweet. They're very pretty. Uh, almost no makeup on. Uh, they got a donkey in the background, <laughs> and they're dressed in traditional clothing. Like this is the, this is the lie I think, and I'm going to call it a lie right now. But this is the lie that guys uh, sign up for when they go down the passport bro uh, road, because this seems very attractive. You know, super feminine women. I don't see any rainbows. I don't see any purple hair dye, face piercings, exposed tattoos, loads of skin. Uh, they certainly don't maneuver and act, you know, promiscuous. Like this guy said over here, there's no twerking, none of that stuff. They're just walking along, singing a uh, relatively, you know, pleasant song, enjoying themselves. You know, like they're not tens, but they're but they're very attractive, you know, by Western standards, you know, especially in. North America, which is what most guys are dealing with. I mean, somebody posted this the other day on um, Twitter, but I think the average weight of a North American woman now is something like 170 pounds uh, plus. Um, so it's right up there, right? So this is what's what's been sold, right? You know, pa you know, pa pack your bag, get your passport, go out here and win, and go and get you know a girl like this and. Everybody's got their preferences. You know, some some guys prefer uh, Latin women. Some guys prefer Asian women. Uh, but there's preferences that everybody expressed. But that's but that's generally where it ends up going. So that's the, I'm going to call it a lie right now. I'm going to explain why if you bear with me on this. So back to that video with the whole passport bro status. So I noticed a few of the comments and I sort of bookmarked a few of them. And there was one guy that was, I mean, he, he wasn't being disrespectful or rude, but he was pushing back a little bit. And he was talking about, um, you know, passport bros and why it's important. And my understanding as I was reading it was that he might have been a, a passport bro and had some experience to share. So I replied back to him. I said, you know, I clarified the misunderstanding. And I said, look, you know, if you've got experience in this area, I'd love to have you on a podcast and you can talk about it. And uh, I said, you know, just email me. So he emailed me and my misunderstanding was not incorrect. Um he went on to talk about his business a little bit, which is cool. And you like my book. Awesome. Thank you. Um, but he said, regarding my passport bro status, I must confess I haven't traveled outside of the U.S. yet. However, I do have a passport and I'm currently in a relationship with a woman from the Philippines. Never anticipated being in a long distance relationship, but she's in my frame and she aligns with my values. She never asked for money. She doesn't have any children. She is responsible, has a good job, and she's actively actually coming here to see me. On the other hand, my dating life here at home, I'm still considered average, at least on paper. So of course, I'm constantly working on improving myself because I'm well aware that even average women are not attracted to the average man. And when it comes to uh, attractive women, average men are practically invisible. Um, he goes on to say, therefore, it's refreshing to have someone who I'm genuinely attracted to while striving for excellence recently uh, so he just talks about purchasing his first property, quit drinking, quit smoking weed and a few other improvements to life, which is cool. Um, so this guy in the comments, 
was holding out or I was under the impression that he had experience and it was the better way to go and was kind of pushing back because I made a comment in that video about the passport bro movement and I'm not a big fan of it just because of the way that guys handle it and how they screw it up and I'll explain that in a sec. This is kind of a typical example of what I'll see, right? I, I'm in a long distance relationship with a woman from the Philippines that I've never met who's in my frame. So you haven't met her. How is she in your frame? How do you know what she's about? How do you know she's loyal to you? How are you in a long distance relationship? Like I've talked about long distance relationships many times on my channel and other podcasts when people call in and ask about it. And it's not a relationship. You are not in a relationship if there is an absence of intimacy. You might be friends, you might be pen pals, you might have expressed interest, but you're not in a relationship. Now, the truth of the matter is, is that the attraction for women uh, in some of these countries, like, you know, within Asia, like Philippines would be a good example. Eastern Europe, like those three gals that were playing the little banjo thing or the bazooki or whatever might have been there in uh, Georgia. Or if it's Latin women, you know, the Colombians or Mexicans or whatever it happens to be. Um, they're, they're, they're still genuinely interested in the best man that they can get. Their hypergamous nature still remains the same. Women are still women. Women in the United States are really not that much different from the women in the Philippines, Georgia, or Colombia. They still want the best guy that they can absolutely get. And comparably speaking, you being in the United States, for example, talking to a gal from the Philippines, you probably look like a better prospect to her than what's available in her immediate dating marketplace. I think this guy mentioned an early, earlier pa paragraph that what he does is he uses an app like Tinder and then switches his geolocation to one of these countries and starts swiping and matching. But you can't be in a long distance. You can't be in a relationship if you're long distance. There's a lack of intimacy. Intimacy doesn't exist. It's not a relationship. Okay. Um, so, you know, what do I keep telling you guys? Men love to complicate their lives and justify why they do it. I'm in a relationship with a gal that I've never met who's purportedly in my frame. That's not a relationship. You you have expressed interest in a girl and she's talking to you, so she has an interest in you. But there's an underlying notion that coming to a first world country like the United States, that's the dream of everybody outside of the West. They want to come to a Western country to better themselves. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger is an amazing example of that. There's a documentary on um, Netflix right now that sort of break down, you know, breaks down his life. And it was like the passion and the, uh, the amount of work and desire that had to go in for him to leave Austria, that little village to end up, you know, where he did in the States and marry a Kennedy and become a governor and a, one of the highest paid actors, you know, in the world. That drive in men is immense. For women, it's a little bit different because they know that their sexuality is their main bargaining position, right? Their beauty. Their youth and their beauty is their main bargaining position. And being in a country where um, women can still be objectively beautiful, but the men don't really bring nearly as much to the table as a guy, even an average guy in the States. Like this guy's saying that he's just an average guy in the States. So, sh so she's purportedly choosing him and actively wanting to come over and see him. Great. Um, my advice in you know scenarios like this where guys are contemplating the passport bro move is go there and stay there uh would be the first thing do not bring them back to the west because they will be westernized within a couple of years and um they're gonna turn to shit. i'm just telling you you know like it is they're gonna adopt western values they're gonna start consuming the kool-aid they're gonna see all the media they're gonna see all the social media all the new stuff the rainbows the wokeness it's all gonna get crammed down their throats some of them will probably protest and resist a little bit more than others, um, but it exists. And, you know, whether it's one, two, three, or five years, they will become westernized. Um, Eddie Murphy did a, a stand, two major stand-ups, uh, Delirious and uh, Raw. I, I can't remember which one it was in. I think it might have been in Raw. But he made this joke about Unfufu, which is some African <laughs> zebra gal that, um, and I'm, using kinder, friendlier language because Eddie has a way with words. But I encourage you to go to YouTube after this and search for Eddie Murphy Unfufu. And this is back in the 80s. And it's the same story back then as what it is today, right? We're talking like 40, 50 years later, right? Uh, not 50 years later, but 
several decades later, obviously, it's still the same dynamic. You know, you, you think that you can go to a country and bring one of these girls back and they're going to remain feminine and they're going to remain in their, uh, like, in their place. But what ends up happening is pretty much exactly what happened to that guy that married the Chinese girl in the video that I published on my YouTube channel. A lot of these guys find these women are disagreeable. They find that they hoard the money. They want to control the money. The house is never big enough. The car is never nice enough. Um, they withhold sex. They use sex to manipulate in the relationship. Um, they send a lot of money back home. And culturally, you know, that exists in a lot of cultures, right? Like um, I know with a lot of Asian cultures, especially, you know, in the Philippines, they will make money here. And the biggest export from North America into the Philippines is just cash. It's just Western unions, generally speaking. I don't know if they use crypto now, but it's 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 a movement of money from North America back back home to take care of their family. And that's something that like bugs me, you know, to some degree when 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 people come to a Western country and they still use that language back home, right? Like home is where you are at right now like you wanted to leave back home because it was a shithole to come over here but it's still back home like they still call it home so money still transfers back over that way so i mean like the first big mistake i see a lot of guys make is they they bring them over here and look i mean if you're an average guy here which seems to be the play for the most part with the guys that screw it up it if you're just an average guy uh making average money you, you know you look average you're not in good shape uh you don't have basic competency skills that are strong masculine and sort of attractive, you know, to all women around the world. I mean, it doesn't change. Um, it doesn't matter if you're in buttfuck Texas or in Langlu Philippines or wherever, you know, um, this guy might be talking to her, at, but it's like, they all want the same thing. They want the best guy that they can get. You know, they come over here and they look at you in comparison to some of the other Western guys. They're going to be disappointed. Right. Um, now, Moving over there is a different part of the equation. But what I see a lot of guys do is they still remain plugged into a social contract that isn't going to serve them over there. Um, this guy is a good example. You know, this email that I still have up over here where he's talking about um, his Filipino long distance relationship who's in his frame and all this sort of stuff. But I mean, I, bro, like I hate to... <laughs> Like, I hate to tell you this, that's not game, right? Like, no guy worth his salt that's that's got game that understands what women respond to and how to maneuver in these spaces is going to be going on about how they have a long-distance relationship with a woman like 7,000 miles away who's in his frame and they're in a relationship. Like, you don't think she's banging somebody else over there? I assure you, my friend, like, women all around the world, and I've said this before, they're never single. They're always dealing with a guy somewhere could be dealing with a baby daddy could be dealing with a guy that's interested in her could be dealing with a friends with benefits could be working in a brothel she could be a prostitute right uh you don't know what's going on over there you are not in a relationship i i can assure you start thinking about worst case scenarios and there's probably one or two that she's up to right sugar and spice and all things nice no it doesn't exist and if you think and hasn't traveled outside of the united states he said if you think that other parts of the world are like better, um, again, you know, women are sugar and spice and all things nice in some other part of the world. There's parts of the world that are way fucking worse, way shittier than the West lifestyles, things that people have to do to survive. Um, you know, people get people here get mad when a woman betrays them and goes outside of the marriage and bangs Kevin from sales or something like that. It's the same everywhere else in the world. There's deception used everywhere else in the world. Um, you have to watch somebody's actions and not believe their words. And if you're sitting there believing a gal's words that's 7,000 miles away, talking about being in a relationship and we're going to be together one day, let's see the actions. Hop on a flight. Get over here. You know, let's see you next weekend. What's stopping you from doing that right now? She doesn't have the money? Oh, she wants you to send the money. Or she's saving up the money. You see what I'm saying, right? Like, you have to watch a woman's actions and never believe the words, right? Listen to the words, trust, but verify, but watch the actions, right? Like that's, that's how you get an, a, that's how you establish a baseline on what they're all about. That's how you size them up by watching their behavior. So don't bring them here, go over there and go over there with game, like understand female nature. 
and use it. I get this guy has watched my stuff and he's read my book and he likes it and he says that he's working on himself, but there's still these gaps that guys experience. And I'm all I do, take a mirror and I hold it up and I reflect back and I say, hey, look, here's some stuff in your blind spot. And in this gentleman's blind spot, long distance relationship with a gal in the Philippines that's in his frame. Come on. You might have been born at night. It probably wasn't last night, right? Exercise some better judgment. Ask some questions, right? Um, travel so you understand what you're dealing with. The guy's never left the state. So how does he know what the Philippines is about, what Filipinos are like? You have no idea what you're getting into. Most of these guys think, oh, she's pretty and she touched my pee, -pee or she wants to touch my pee, pee and things are you know, going well because things don't go well with the other girls over here. Like I'm invisible. I get it. Okay, fine. But the amount of game that you need to deal with a woman, like a Western woman, you're going to need the same to deal with a woman from Georgia, from the Philippines, from Colombia, you know, whatever your, you know, interest happens to be, like wherever she happens to be sort of thing, you're still going to need top shelf game. You just can't, you know, she's in my frame and I'm in a long distance relationship. Like that tells me that you don't know what you're talking about. But that, that tells me that you don't understand the dynamics between men and women and what works, believing that you're in a long distance relationship with a chick from the Philippines that you've never met, you've never left the country, and she's purportedly in your frame. You see what I'm saying here, right? Like, learn everything because everything that you learn here applies over there. Don't take shortcuts and just think, oh, I'm, I don't need to understand, you know, what women actually respond to. I don't need to understand Evo Psych. I don't need to read, you know, Rich's book or pay attention or whatever. I don't need any of that stuff. I'm just going to unplug myself from here and plug myself into this country over here and everything will be tickety boo. No, you're going to get fucked big time. So do it, but, but understand it is still a slaughterhouse. It doesn't matter if it's here or over there. It's probably less of a slaughterhouse. I mean, certain countries are more favorable towards men, obviously. Right. Like I had, um, Raphael from wealthy expat, um, out for lunch a few weeks ago. The video is going to publish on my channel in the next week or so. Um, and he was talking about, look, you know, like one of the benefits of being in Dubai is it's a patriarchal society. And if you ever have to untie the knot, if you ever get divorced, you, you're going to make out fine. You know, if you're a guy, like it's not going to be bad for you. Right. Dubai is not a perfect example for passport bros because it's very expensive over there. Like I would be poor over there. Right. Like, you know, to drive a a nice car over there, whatever, it's invisible. You know, do you have a $3 million hypercar? You know, do you have a, you know, something like this? Like this is like, this is the difference between places like Dubai and Philippines, you know, for example. Now there are, you know, countries with lower cost of livings that are more patriarchal, where women are feminine and all that sort of stuff. Great. A little bit of advantage there for you. Good. But don't forget to learn game. Don't forget to understand what women actually respond to. Don't, like be able to hold frame in the relationship. You have no idea how to hold frame in a relationship on a long distance basis. You know, you might think it's like, okay, well, let's hop on a FaceTime call at eight, eight o'clock and she answers when I call her and that's frame. That's not frame. When she starts shit testing you and pushing back and want to do different things with money that you make or live somewhere different or move her parents in or some shit and you have to pay for it. Now we're talking some frame. Okay. Um, so just understand, like, it's not as, you know, quick and easy as just be a passport, bro. Like, just get a passport and fuck off and go somewhere else. And everything will be great. It doesn't work that way. And more often than not, I see guys get ruined. If you're a dork here, you're going to be a dork over there. And you're going to be taken advantage of by some dork in some, like, third world country or second world country, right? So, you know, pick your poison. The point of the, you know, the point of all this, again, is learn what works understand what women respond to okay and then apply it 100 percent um my truth here says average passport holder is hundred ten thousand dollar a year they are also draining the state of future skilled competent captain save a ho 304 if they leave they're going to subsidize the mercia welfare state treasury coffers left to, i don't know what any of that means dude but thanks for the super chat um, the call in link is pinned up at the top there for the Q and a, so just click that moff will, uh, clear your audio. Um, uh, but yeah, like Jake's pointing out in the chat here, there's very few cheat codes in life. You got to do the damn work either way. Like there's like, there's no shortcut to it. Um, 
Anyway, let's uh, let's get to the Q and A segment and um, see what some callers have for us tonight. I'm going to run the ad reel and we'll be back in like a minute and a half. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code ALPHA10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then, I use Tactical Soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical Soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine-lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bio-identical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness, to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. All right, yeah, let's dive into this. Um, Here, let's give it to Victor first and again guys a link for q a and if you have questions about the topic tonight please like now is the time to do it on the live show um got a bunch of you guys watching live do it now man yeah absolutely hit that like button for me too it helps out with the algorithms all right uh victor what's going on buddy? hey rich can you hear me yeah man i just want to ask you about x3 program i watched your video with dr john uh, jackowish yeah, yeah uh, i'm not sure if you posted another video about uh, his program or not but mm-hmm. you finished uh, dealing with it yeah so uh, your feedback any comments on that it's good for travel um i didn't i didn't get out of it what i thought i was going to get out of it you know as far as muscle gain um the best results i've ever got like i'm i'm heavier now than i ha- have ever been in my entire life with less body fat like i'm 223 pounds i was just with my trainer today and we weighed um that's dealing with a, a personal trainer like if you want to get really good results honestly dude like you're never going to get away from going to a gym and having a good personal trainer that knows exactly what to do and how to train your body the x3 uh package for those of you that don't know it's basically a steel bar and a plate that you stand on and you have i think four or five different bands that you swap out um dr jockwish was kind enough to send me uh, a kit and i used it for quite a few months actually um if you have injuries if you have a bad lower back if you have a predisposition to certain injuries or you have injuries in different parts of your body that you sort of want to be a little careful with i'd say it's probably good for that but if you're younger and that's not an issue for you i'd I'd go trainer. Yeah, I'd go to a gym and, you know, just was my was my gym is work better, is trainer's hard. best. Yeah, it was my work is a little bit tough to, you know, go to gym all the time, so. Yeah, for what you do because you travel a lot, right? You probably yeah. you probably find benefit in just busting that thing out and, you know, doing a few reps. It's look, man, it's better than sitting on your ass and doing nothing. Yeah, that's true. Anything's okay. better than sitting on your ass and doing nothing. Hey man, um where are you from? What's the country of uh, origin for you? Uh, Ukraine. So, you know, since we're on the topic of passport bros, what are Ukrainian women like versus, because I mean, like you live in Canada now, right? So what are the Ukrainian women like versus Western women? Are they much different? Like, how would you explain the concept to guys that like Ukrainian women, you know, for example, or Eastern European women? I would honestly not able to give you much because the last time I was there was 2017 and it's been six years and I was how you like to call it totally beta i didn't watch for the flags i didn't watch for anything yeah. but uh they mostly care about uh entitlement i guess it's like oh we just we just met like two days oh we mm. already girlfriend and boyfriend right there mm. right so it's it's uh 
I personally think even I travel to Mexico as well and other uh, places. I think uh, it's a different mentality and uh, and a set what triggers them. Like you can have a game in North America, but when you go to Russia, Ukraine, you need a different type of game. They tri- the triggers there is way different than uh, in, uh, in. Yeah. Uh, so. This. I had a thing in my 20s for Eastern European women. I almost exclusively dated Eastern European women in you know, my 20s. And they're a handful. They're not as easy as what guys think. They're, they will shit test you. Like you have to know how to deal with them. Like they're strong women. They're beautiful. They're feminine, but they're strong, right? Like they will push. Yeah. We well, have a joke that uh, real women in Ukraine and Russia can s- walk in into fire, fire your building and stop a horse while it's running. <laughs> so be aware of that when <laughs> you're dealing with one. Say that again. Well, in Russian, it sounds way better. Uh, you basically, uh, I, can, I can say it. I don't know if you want to hear it in Russian or not. But a uh, woman can walk in in a fiery house easily yeah. and okay. can stop a horse while it's running. Okay. So yeah. that's basically that we have saying we have saying that uh, implies a woman there like that. So yeah, they, so it they implies not that they're extremely tough. competent. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they not only tough, they fucking able to control everyone. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right. Um, I think I figured out what what this guy was saying in the super chat because he's talking about draining the West of uh, tax revenue. Um, and future skilled, competent uh, labor. But again, like, I think that starts to fall into the category of, well, if enough men just check out from the sexual marketplace and avoid Western women, then they'll fall back in line and be nice, kind, agreeable, and compliments to men's lives again. And that would require for all men to completely disengage from women. I was talking to... Um, Elliot Hulse uh, on his podcast a few weeks back. And that's kind of a similar point that he made. He's like, you know, like we have to stop indulging in degeneracy and promiscuity. And it's like, okay, that's noble, but that would require everybody to participate in that. And if women are, you know, opening themselves to guys at all ages and doing it multiple times with multiple men, and men are indulging and that's really why we're here i mean like we're here to have sex obviously scatter seed um do you really think you're going to convince all guys to stop doing that like do you really think you're going to get every guy that makes uh what do you say hundred ten thousand dollars a year to drain the future skill incompetent labor to go to other countries it's not going to happen because immigration here is still way bigger than people leaving the countries. Like even even during the height of the lockdown here, okay? Like you know, during the scandemic, loads of my friends that are entrepreneurs that had location independent business, they just left. They're like fuck it. They went to Mexico, they went to Barbados, they went to Dubai. A lot of my friends just said, "I'm not staying here. I'm tired of paying taxes. Like getting locked down like this was a straw that broke the camel's back. I'm just going to take my shit and go." That doesn't change anything. That doesn't change any of the policies. And there's still more people immigrating to the country than there are people leaving, right? You would need everybody with skills and with wealth to leave for them to take notice. And even then, they probably wouldn't even give a shit because it's the government. They'll just be like, oh, we'll just print more money. We'll just find somebody to tax. Oh, there's a cockroach over there. Let's go tax tax the cockroach, right? Like this is how, <laughs> this is the incompetency. Like this is the level of thinking that you can expect from government, right? Anyway, you get the point. Um, what's Ross got here in the chat? There's no cheat codes to life, but a lot of guys that call in would have their problems solved with TRT. <laughs> TRT is funny, man. Look, uh, testosterone replacement therapy is a useful tool. Um, it's not always necessary for everybody, especially in their 30s, um, maybe not even in their 40s. By the time they hit 50s and 60s, it's definitely something to contemplate. Some guys, you know, get on it a little sooner than others. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can do to optimize your endocrine system. And it's not just, you know, let's just solve it by pinning ourselves with testosterone or getting the pellets, you know, sewn into our ass cheek and have it melt away over the next uh, six months. Um, there's lots of stuff that you can do to optimize your health. I did a cast last week on the... Uh, Unplugged Alpha podcast series talking about ways to optimize 
your help. Where's my, um, it's too far away for me to reach it. But the um, sheet that I have over there on the inflammatory markers in your body, um, I never got a chance to check any of those things out. I never got a chance to remove foods out of my system that cause inflammation to get plant cholesterol out of my system to see if my um, hormone panel will change. Nobody told me that. Nobody. I mean, I figured that out eight, nine years after the fact, after being on, on TRT. And once you get on it, you can't come off it. So before you go thinking about, oh, you know, TRT is a solution to everything, like just go, go get some more testosterone. Yeah, get more testosterone. But the best source of it comes from your balls. Just being honest with you, man. Um, and look, if, if you're compromised, if, um, you know, you've tried everything, then yeah, definitely go on TRT, man. It's good. It's the bomb. Trust me. It's all good. Uh, the caller link is there guys. If you have, if you have questions, if you got something you want to chat about with the whole passport bro thing, bring it on, man. Let's, you know, let's have a conversation about it and chop it up. Um, one of the other comments that came up in that video that I did, um, actually here, you know what, let, let me just pull that up real quick. Um, cause there was some, there were some top comments that really like resonated hardcore, man. Um, here, I'll pause this and we just read a few of them right up here at the top. Come on, YouTube cooperate. There they are. So if you watch my other channel at entrepreneurs and cars, you probably heard me say at the end of pretty much every video, Chop it up in the comments, guys. Chime in in the comments. What's your experience been? You know, share your story. This one's got 3,436 comments and it's not even, it's only been published for five days. Like people are sharing wicked stories here about guys that have just put themselves through the fucking ringer over this whole passport, you know, movement, right? Um, this guy over here, look. I'm a male nurse. I work with Asian women, Filipino and Chinese. If you think Asian women are sugar and spice and everything night, I have a lakefront property to sell you in Arizona. Uh, they can be the most difficult people to work with. And I mean, in every sense, out of every 10, there's maybe two to three pleasant ones. Rest are very stubborn, just not the best. This is my lived experience. I work as a travel nurse in Texas two years ago. And an Asian nurse was always trying to find faults in my work when I was giving her shift reports in the morning. So one evening when I came in to start my shift, I realized she hadn't started prepping the patient for surgery the next day. Anyway, he goes on and on about talking about his experience dealing with, you know, the, like the whole sugar and spice notion of um, kinder, friendlier, more feminine, you know, women from diff different parts of the world. Uh, this guy over here, similar, six foot two, 36. Married to an Eastern European wife 10 years ago. I met my wife overseas and brought her back to America and improved her life tremendously as she came up from a poor background. To make a long story short, nothing was ever good enough. Sex was only given if I bought her expensive clothes, shoes, purses, watches, and jewelry because otherwise she wouldn't put out and say that she didn't feel like it. I worked many hours of overtime to improve our lives. In the end, I was taken to the cleaners and she took our family home, six bedroom, three bathroom house, uh, two one-bedroom condo rentals and one one-bedroom condo rental. My Mustang, my Audi, and Honda she <laughs> took everything. Uh, she, she also has my two antique Rolexes that were given to me by my parents before they passed away. She has full custody of my son, and I pay 30% of my income and child support every month. She now brought her whole family to live with her in our house, and she's dating a doctor in the hospital she works at. I'm now feeling happier, but my net worth has dropped 80%. I hope guys reading this don't ever go through what I went through. So like I said earlier, you know, if you're a beta and you go overseas and you get a gal thinking things are going to be better, sure, initially they might seem that way because you weren't getting much response from women here. And all of a sudden now you're getting attention. She's touching your pee, -pee. She seems interested. But if it's transactional, if it's buy me jewelry, buy me a bigger house, buy me shoes, buy me a per, uh, an Audi, a Honda, you know, we need rental properties. This chick took the dude to the cleaners. Go read the comments for yourself. All right, let me uh, grab Kevin here, who's uh, waiting to ask a question. And I'll get back to this stuff in a sec. Kevin, how you doing, man? Oh, hey, Rich. What do you got for me tonight, brother? Oh, hey, Rich. Uh, I just want to say first, man, I, I'm a big fan. Entrepreneurs in Cars i have been following you for quite a while. Awesome. Uh, with that said, I just want to get right to the question. I've basically been just 
trying to find ways to reach out to you. And I thought this was the best way I can uh, ask you directly. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, I've been researching some of your uh, content and some of the products and courses that you've been offering. And I'm just curious if, uh, I just wanted to ask if like what sort of uh, either your products or your high ticket coaching or maybe other courses that you wanted to sell more of. And I just wanted to, I may have discovered a way where we could potentially sign up more clients into your high net worth coaching. And I just want to find out if that's something you'd be Not open issue, to Kevin. discuss about. No, I get, I get DMS and, and emails dozens of times every day. I will, yeah. I will put it out on Instagram stories one day. If I'm looking for help with anything, I'm not looking for help with anything. I don't need to blow it up. I don't need any other problems. I'm good. Appreciate it though. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, hey, uh, okay. All right, Rich. All right. See you. All right. Yeah, guys, don't uh, like don't pitch me on this show. This isn't a show to pitch me on your services. It's a Q&A show. So bring questions, um, ideally relevant to the topic. And let's dive into them, stuff like that. Like I get so many fucking messages every day from guys looking for, let me do this, let me do that, let me do your copywriting, let me do your thumbnails. No, I don't need to blow up my high ticket, whatever. I'm not interested. Life is good. I like, you know, my podcasting. I'm not you know, Mr. Sell everything all the time, biggest guy out there. I'm not into that. That's not me. Um, let me grab uh, cowboy over here. What's up, cowboy? Yeah, I mean, if you want, I can come wire your house. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> What's I'm up, man? What you very, uh, very location dependent. Um, I'd like to get to the, the passport bros capabilities, but how does one transition into, you know, I know there's no cheat codes, but I don't know much about online marketing and sales. I've been studying, looking into it, but how do you get that frying pan to the forehead moment of, uh, I need to take this career and make it mobile when it is such a location dependent career. What do you do for a living again? Electrician. So you'd have to figure out a way to use your skills and expertise from anybody from anywhere in the world. So if you're an electrician, for example, um, what the hell was his name? Uh, Smart Passive Income was his podcast. So, so I used to listen to this podcast like a couple of decades ago. It's been around for a while now. Maybe it's like 15 years ago. Uh, Pat Flynn. And it was called Smart, Smart Passive Income. And he used to interview people all the time. And one of the things that he did was he basically transitioned to a media company, essentially. You know, like creating content, like a, like a personality. And... I think he was an engineering or something to do with uh, security engineering or something like that. And he got a package, went home, just started doing podcasts and just talking. Um, usually the, the aha moment is, okay, well, I can't do this anymore because I'm anchored to a certain location and I don't have the option to do it anymore anyway because they package me off or they fire me. So I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take my skills and do something else. Now, a few of these guys from these podcasting crews, um, Entrepreneur on Fire was another one. Uh, John Lee Dumas, I think was his name. He moved down to Puerto Rico. And, you know, again, he was lo location dependent at one point. Same thing with, you know, Pat Flynn. And they created, um, you know, information business, podcast, uh, information product. And one of the things I saw Pat Flynn do is he put this course together that helped uh, people graduate whatever engineering course that he was an expert in to help them get that degree and move forward to the next sort of uh, level because apparently it was quite difficult. So you could put out information on how to become an electrician, how to get certified, DIY stuff. I mean, you can do it on YouTube. You know, like there's, there's, there's YouTube channels. Like I've had conversations with other guys in the space that are also licensed electricians that do the time for money thing. And it's like, there's, there's actually licensed electricians out there that make YouTube videos and they've got 800, 900,000 subs. And all they do is they talk about electrician stuff, right? You can do that from anywhere in the world, right? Um, so you have to get innovative. You have to sort of lean into beyond just, okay, well I can wire a, a house. Okay. That's cool. But can you teach, I don't know, a million people how to wire a house that might need to learn how to wire a house or a simplified wiring um, that some 
random guy in a mud hut in the middle of nowhere, you know, can sort of make for himself. Like you have to innovate with it, man. Like you got to think outside of the box. There's inside of the box thinking there's outside of the box thinking there's not even seeing the box thinking, start thinking outside of the box. When you're creating ideas, keep a journal and like jot down ideas, business ideas, and see if there's something that, you know, really like if you keep going back to it, like you're journaling and you're writing down these business ideas and you keep going back to it over and over and over again, that's a frying pan to the forehead moment where you're like, this might be something. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, like you can stumble into these things just by starting something else, but being intentional and sort of like thinking about problems that you like, what problems do you see over and over again as an electrician that you can solve or sell as an information course to people that are dealing with the same problem that they can sidestep the whole picking up the yellow pages and paying somebody to come over and do it for them? What, what possibilities exist in those realms? The problem is, is everywhere is so localized. Like your codes in Canada are totally different than they are here in Missouri or mm -hmm. Kansas or Florida or right. go to Europe. They're, they do stuff totally different. Uh, I specialize in, I used to do houses all the time. Now all I do is gas stations and car washes. And there's a ton of money in it. Um, I can work on the side and make forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on the side, but I have to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really teach somebody how to do that without having the, the, the physical apparatus in front of you, you know, yeah. this is a ice and brush or this is a, a top wash. This is how you wire it. Da, 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 da. Uh, Another way to do it, cowboy is you can, you can mash up business ideas. Like one of the things that James Altucher taught me a long time ago was marry up ideas that you have, like passions that you have. Um, an example that he's used often is when you were 12 years old and you kind of go back to that time, what did you do that you were so passionate about that you lost track of time doing? And is there a way that you can take a couple of ideas, marry them up, let them have a little bit of idea sex and turn it into something? Like the whole notion of the original YouTube channel, Entrepreneurs in Cars, was interview friends and their success rides. For me, it was Top Gear meets TED Talks, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how I sort of like married those two things up. Now. I still do videos in the car, so I can still call the ch you know the channel Entrepreneurs in Cars because it still works. But you can find different things that you're passionate about and marry them. Like I, I'm always going to love cars, and I'm always going to love hanging out with entrepreneurs. I love having these conversations, and I love driving fast cars. Right. So I mean, I I kind of fill that cup now by doing rallies because just about everybody that does the rallies now and these supercars are almost always entrepreneurs, and they're also car fans. So we. We kind of tick off those boxes, you know, for each other sort of thing. You just have to sort of like lean into this stuff, man. You know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm getting it. You know, you with I'm me? just curious. Like, I'm curious. Like you said, if you were to move to Dubai, you'd be poor. So yeah, let's say if you went to Dubai, how would you, how would you get that next frying pan to the forehead moment? Like, okay, Rich Cooper needs to do this in Dubai to exponentially make as much there as you do here. Yeah, so I mean, if I go to Mexico. A place like Dubai is not for me because I like mountains and beaches, right? So, and it's too far away from North America. Like, I've still got anchors here that I that I will come and visit. I don't like traveling and flying and shit. So, for me, that would be a place that I w really wouldn't, you know, consider. I might visit it. I might visit some friends there, you know, sort of thing. But it's not high up on the list. Um, and also the fact that you really need serious bank to live there comfortably. You know what and I mean? That's, that, that's my problem. Like, say I was to move to Mexico, the average electrician in Mexico makes like thirteen dollars a day. Okay, so how do you make what you make where you're at right now, but live in Mexico? You have to create something that's location independent, right? Yeah. What information can you sell? Knowledge, past experiences. Okay. Or uh, innovative ideas, I guess. Products. Right. And, you know. and then you need an an audience that's going to buy it. So how do you create the audience? You can put out a podcast, you can do a YouTube series, you can blog. There's any number of ways to do it, but you have to build the audience so that you can sell them that thing. So while you're living in Mexico, you're making US dollars at USD rates, right? Okay. It doesn't you. have to be Mexico. It can be anywhere you want, right? You know, yeah. whatever you happen to fancy, like it doesn't have to be Dubai. It doesn't have to be Mexico. It's like, you know, what do you like? What kind of food do you like? What kind of women do you like? What kind of landscape do you like? Do you like mountains? Do you like beaches? Do you like dry? Do you like jungle? Like, you know, what's your what's your jam, right? Like, pick that. Don't don't go where the herds are going. It's like everybody right now is like Dubai, 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 Dubai. It's like fine, cool. Right. No, I want to be on the water somewhere. Not me. Sure. 
I watched uh, your podcast. I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he bought a sailboat, had a real successful uh, company, construction company in California. Yeah, that was uh, Dwayne Hale. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I never really figured out how he was able to take construction after his divorce and turn it mobile. Um, I'm trying to remember, he but he kind of explained out. it. He he basically just took his money and bought a three hundred four hundred thousand dollars sailboat, right? I think it's a fifty three foot sailboat. Um, I'm assuming his boat somewhere between three hundred and half a million, right? That's that's the value of a house in California. So he probably just sold his house, bought the boat, lives on the boat, does charters, enjoys his life over there. Cost of living in the Mediterranean is cheap. He has a good time. He's single. He enjoys himself. Now, see, that would be ideal for me. <laughs> yeah. I just don't have the funds yet. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, like you start kind of leaning into it and you'll figure something out, man. Like, you know, if you've got enough hunger for it, like if you have enough strong, genuine burning desire to like go and go and create something and do something differently, you will find a way. You will either find a way or you will find an excuse. Right. It's like, are you finding a way more than you're finding an excuse and keep finding that way. Right. Are you in my school of entrepreneurship? Yes, sir. And cool. the 10 percent group. Yeah. Do those do those lectures. Right. Like. I even went back the other day because I've recorded the lectures, you know, well over a year ago, but like do the lectures again, like just, just, just sit back and kick through them, you know, take some notes. Key. I usually have this um, small notepad. It's not with me right now because I got it in the car, but I usually have this like small little uh, paper notepad and I put a pen inside it. And I mean, like you can use these things if you got to record your mileage in your car, you can keep it in your pocket. If you got business ideas, some people like to use like Evernote as an app on their phone, but just jot down ideas, right? Like, it's often been said that creating ideas is like a muscle. And if you don't create ideas, if you don't chew up new ideas, then you're going to atrophy and you're going to lose its strength. You're going to lose its capabilities. And then you're going to be asking questions like, okay, well, how do I do this? And how do it's like, nobody's going to give you the ABCD sort of thing. It's like, I think the best thing that you can do, dude, is like paint this picture of what you want your life to look like. And now that you have clarity on what you want your life to look like, Make sure every day when you get up, you do as many things as possible that get you close to that goal. When you find yourself doing things that are deviating away from that goal, from that life that you want, from the experiences that you want, you're on the wrong path. You have to course correct. You have to reconnect to where it is that you want to go. That's what a painted picture is. Yeah. Uh, or a vivid vision. My old vivid. business coach used to call it a, a painted picture and then he changed the name of it to Viv Vivid Vision. He has a book called Vivid Vision, by the way, if you want to look it up. C Cameron Harold. I will. I will. Yeah. That's kind of the NLP process. It's it's just visualizing clear, clearly and concisely what you want. And from his angle, what you want your business to look like, what you want your business to do, what problems you want it to solve, what you want the public to view it as, all of those things. Um yeah. In the absence of clarity, just do stuff at the yeah, end of the day. That's what cool? I'm trying. Thank you. All right, brother. See you, man. See you. All right. Let me get this uh, super chat here. Giuseppe. Uh, super chat. My opinion is that you shouldn't have to play on hard mode to be with a woman. When life is hard, a woman is supposed to bring you peace. Playing hard mode with women is exhausting and will cause you a headache and stroke. It's absolutely true. I would, I 100% co-sign what he just said there. Like, why would you want to deal with a woman that causes havoc, chaos, discomfort, annoyance? Why? Why? Like, I would, I would rather be single. I would rather like not deal with chicks at all. Forget it. Like, like what's the point, right? The whole notion when I tell guys to level up, do the work on themselves, put their den in the universe, you know, the whole do your work for, you know, sort, sort of thing. That's not to get girls. Getting girls is a consequence of you doing the work on yourself. Getting Having access to beautiful women is a consequence of putting in the time and effort on yourself. And cool, you know, now you're spoiled for choice. This one's a pain in the ass. She's annoying. She sucks. Let her go. You got better options because you have options, right? Anyway, I bang on that drum a lot. You guys get the point. Let me grab Dylan over here, see what he's got for us. Dylan, what's up, brother? Hey, what's up, Rich? What do you got for me tonight? I just wanted to know if you were my age, which is 20, would you be open to having a family in modern day Canadian society? Fuck no. <laughs> no. It's that's 
That's not even a no. That's a fuck no. Oh, um, I've seen too many men get destroyed in family law. And Canada is one of the worst places in the world to get married. I mean, look, you've probably heard the stories before. It's, you know, why would you sign a contract with somebody else that is rewarded richly for breaking it? And that's what that's essentially what family law is. If you want to have a family, cool. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's absolutely normal. Don't let anybody tell you you're being an idiot. The world's overpopulated. Just go whatever. Like if you want to have, do it, but do it intelligently, man. Like I would set up my life in such a way at 20, knowing the hazards that exist with family law so that you minimize them as much as possible. I don't think you're ever going to completely eliminate them because even if you move to a patriarchal country where you have full control and an iron, iron tight prenup, uh, you know, you vetted her completely. There's no red flags. Her family's awesome. All, like all that stuff. Women always reserve the right to change their mind at any given time later on down the road, and she may want to untie the knot, right? So it's not like everything's foolproof. It's just you want to structure your life in such a way where you minimize it as much as possible. Okay, that's all I wanted to know, bro. Thank you so much. Yeah, and Canada is not the place to do it. I'm going to have a section in my follow-up book that's going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so, you know, keep an eye out for that in the future, but there's, there's really a lot to contemplate and what we might talk about today at 20 for you may not be the, the most appropriate path to take at 30 when you're getting serious about it. Right. Cause in 10 years time, a lot of shit could change. I mean, you might set down roots and set yourself up in a place or a country or a region and a job with the right type of prenup that you think is all good. But in 10 years time, a lot of that shit could change. So just, you know, just educate yourself. The most important thing though, dude, right now for you, Dylan, is chase excellence, figure out how to make some serious bank because I hate to say it, but money solves pretty much all your problems, right? You want to have kids and the country you live in sucks. Guess what? You're going to need a shitload of money to move somewhere else and set up a new life over there. And then, you know, you're going to need connections. You're going to need contacts. You're going to, you're going to need a lawyer. You're going to need an accountant. You're going to, you're going to have to do a lot of shit. Money solves all of that. Yeah, my dad's an accountant, so I have one part of that equation solved. But yeah, oh, man, yeah. Thank you so much, though, for answering my question, bro. No problem, man. Don't, 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 uh, don't sigh and be disheartened and think it's impossible. Because I mean, I'll tell you this. So here's a here's a plus side of the story. Um, I know a lot of guys that have been divorce raped in North America. And the loaded ones, they don't care. They're just like, whatever. I gave, you know, I was worth 40 million. I gave her 20. I got 20 left over. I'll make it back in fucking five years. They just don't give a shit, right? As long as they're a good mom and, you know, they, you know, they help raise the kids and they have access to the kids to some degree, then they just don't care. But, you know, for a guy that's worth a lot less than that, it's pretty fucking painful. I mean, there was a guy in the comments over here that was talking about losing 80% of his wealth. But, contemplate it for a bit just understand it but don't but don't let it consume you don't let it be about your like end all be off you know what i'm saying all right brother yeah th thank you so much bro all right you got it uh, Take care. yeah all right um again guys the link is pinned in the top comment if you want to hop in and ask a question probably going to go a little bit later than 9 30 just because uh i started a bit late um so i got another comment here from a dude from that video and he says, my situation is similar to this guy. So this was the guy that married the uh, Chinese gal. Uh, in my case, okay, so this guy's Asian. In my case, I'm Asian. The ex-wife is from an Eastern European bloc country. I had the same issues being a plugged-in beta. I substantially improved the ex-wife's life and immediately her family. I got nothing but contempt from her after we got married and had a kid. You notice how this almost always happens after the marriage. Because once you say, I do and the nuptials are signed, and the ink has dried on the marriage contract and it's been filed with the government, that's when they change, you know? That's when you'll see the real person. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's the way that it works. Uh, anyway, he goes on to say, nothing I did was good enough. Sounds familiar, right? Sounds almost exactly like the last guy. All of this despite going through cancer twice, where she was MIA, stands for missing in action, during my second cancer situation, I had the decision to make whether to stay for my kid or leave. 
Ultimately, I filed for divorce. Rich is correct about getting out. So my advice to this guy in the video um, on the Entrepreneurs of Car channel was untie the knot, but plan it properly. Um, I should have gotten out sooner uh, with the sexless uh, marriage thing. I went through five or sorry, five to six years of no sex while still married. Jesus. Uh, being divorced now for three years, things are much better. Yes, there's still issues with the ex controlling my access to our kid, but at least they are defined legal guardrails now. Not an arbitrary setup where the ex defines on a whim. For a while, I too was worried about the ex running off to her native country with her kid, but that fear has now subsided for a number of reasons, one of which she no longer can do this. See, because once you get that custody arrangement, leaving the country with a child without the parental consent of the other parent becomes very, very difficult. So this is how you get the control. It's part, it's it's one of the mechanisms anyway. The passport our kid has expired and I refuse to sign the State Department form authorizing a new passport. Very clever. There's no way she can leave the country with her kid aside from trying to illegally smuggling him out, uh, which is unlikely to happen, let's be honest. I wish I discovered Rich's content before I got married. This is a warning to those who are still plugged into life, already paved with the future tears of anguish. Since waking up, I've been spoiled for choice with women and have been living up life. I realize that I'm the prize and many women can see this. Per Rich's definition of a high value man, I have a good career making good money. I'm into interesting things where women can be a part of it. Own various toys, motorcycles, cars, sailboat, have a beach home. I'm Jack for my age at 52. Six foot five, dude's a giant, 205 pounds. The only component that was missing was my mental health, which Rich fixed. I can't thank him enough. So like this ongoing story pops up over and over and over and over again in the comments. There's literally 3,400 comments in this. And there's a few guys that are like, yeah, you know, my wife of 20 years from Belarus has been wonderful. Um, you know, it worked out well for me. There's the odd one like that. But the vast majority of them, it's like, these guys get destroyed. Here's one. I was in the U.S. Air Force. Every guy I knew that married a Filipino woman when stationed over there was miserable for the rest of their lives. Move, the, move their families to the U.S. Jesus. Imagine, you know, it's the same story. Move them over here, have a sexless marriage. She tries to control and ma manipulate you and your, uh, you know, your access to your kid. Then you have to move their family over here and then support their, their family. Spent all his money to pay at casino. Worked on the commissary baggers mafia. What the hell is that? Commissary baggers mafia. Kept her money to herself or sent it home. Hang out at the base club four nights. I don't know what that is. I guess it's military talk. Yeah, dude. I could I could go on. There's like like I said. There's 3,400 comments in here. Almost all of them are saying mostly the same thing. My experience with Chinese culture is that it's inherently narcissistic because of shame avoidance. I've been very loose in general here. Not all Chinese people are that nar narcissistic, but within the culture, it's ingrained avoidance of shame. So this guy's just talking about his personal experience in that part of the world out of altruism. Yeah, this guy over here got cooked. Out of altruism, he says, I married a Chinese girl and did everything I could to help her out in financial and immigration. In the end, she cooked a case against me in court. Yeah, you know, like I said, look, if you're a beta, if you're plugged in beta in the West and you go to, you know, passport bro sort of country realm, if you're still plugged in beta, you're not going to have a good experience. So one of the points that I made, um, which I should reiterate because I didn't talk about it, is there's, there's some good examples out there of guys that you might want to contemplate following. Um, there's a guy that I came across his names, Tony huge. And I think he lives in Thailand. Um, this guy is, he's got to figure it out. Right. I mean, first of all, a lot of these guys go to Thailand because gear is like legal, you know, you can just get over the counter. So there are a lot of bodybuilders and this is what Tony huge is. That's his story anyway, but, but he's a big jacked alpha looking dude that understands female nature, runs a bunch of women openly. He talks about it on his channel. Um, he seems pretty legit. I don't know him personally, but from what I've seen, that's the example that I would follow if you want to look as like a icon of the passport, bro. Something like that. But like the guys that are all, I'm in a long distance relationship with a girl in the Philippines that I've never met and she's in my frame. No, mm -mm. nope, nope, nope. I can tell immediately when I read that stuff, that is a prelude to getting destroyed. And guys, you'd be surprised how many people 
understand these concepts and these notions and they watch the podcast and they read the book and they still don't apply it. They still don't listen to it. You lead horses to water, but they don't always drink. Here's a, here's a black dude that married a Japanese woman. Leave, he says, immediately. I'm a black American that was married to a Japanese woman from Tokyo for seven years, divorced now. I met her when I lived there, brought her to the U.S. She hated America, so she made my life a living hell in order to pressure me into moving back to, back to Japan. Ignoring that my career is based in the U.S., she alienated my family. She was a complete narcissist and was money hoarding. This money hoarding story why does it keep popping up? Like if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck, right? Like you're going to end up with something similar. Money hoarding seems to be a serious issue with this stuff. All my money, of course, selfish and provided no intimacy for two years. There you go, withholding sex. Uh, we slept in separate bedrooms at the end. She didn't want to go to therapy because she didn't like the face of truth. Luckily, we didn't have any kids. <laughs> he says... Pick your shit up and jump the first thing, smoking or zooming if it's an EV. Once you marry an Asian wife equals to married her whole family, you have to take care of not just her, but including her parents and siblings. And siblings. Hey, look, if you're the rich white guy and uh, you, know, you want to get into that sort of stuff, cool. You might think it's cheap over there, but it's probably not going to be cheap if she's going to be hoarding your money and you're going to be taking care of her family. Not just her parents, but her siblings too. Anyway, I think you guys get the point. All right. I think we'll wrap it up on that note. It's, uh, it's a sensitive topic. I get it. Uh, I'm going to drop the link to the video that I did. The title of it is How This Man's Life Changed After Marrying an Asian Woman. So you can check that out now that the video is sort of uh, winding down and wrapping up. But be careful, guys. You know... Get your head squared away. Women are dangerous everywhere in the world. It's like, okay, what is the degree of danger that you're going to deal with, you know, that you're going to expose yourself? Well, I can promise you if you deal with a chick that's got the 20 red flags, she's going to make your life very difficult. If she doesn't, she'll probably not make your life as difficult. You go to a different part of the world, there's different cultural expectations. There's parts of the world where women will hoard money, hoard your money. Well, they'll expect you to take care of their parents and their family or move them in or to move them back. They'll withhold sex. Understand what you're getting into and vet, vet, vet. How many times have I told you guys, watch how she behaves over a good year, year and a half, two years. Then you'll see what she's made of, right? If you're dating her a year, year and a half in and she's throwing hissy fits, she's withholding sex, she's going AWOL, she's disappearing, you know, you don't know what's going, get rid of her. Get rid of her. Why would you keep that around you? Why? For what? Because she touched your pee, pee once six months ago? Who cares? You get my point. Anyway, let's wrap it up on that note. Hope you guys have a good night. See you guys very soon. All right, guys. If you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, The Unplugged Alpha, community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt, and what you are doing right now isn't paying off the balances, then visit totaldebtfreedom.ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months. Make sure you check out the top pinned comment on YouTube for all the links mentioned during the show. Peace.